The first uh, place they want me to talk about is an incident that uh, occurs, not occurred, occurs in the village of Bantam, where State Route 125 and 222 meet, uh, east <coughs> of uh, the Starlight Drive-In and between Amelia and Bethel. Uh, this is known as Dead Man's Curve. It's been known as that for many, many years. When the road was first built in 1831, the uh, construction of the road was uh, very poorly made in this particular spot and it was very easy for wagons and carriages, horses carrying people to actually slip down or roll over the hillside. Many people died there. What goes on there today is nothing new. It, it goes way back. Uh, the road was a two-lane highway until 1968 when the road was widened between Amelia and Bethel into four lanes. And at a ribbon cutting there at 222, at what is today known as Dead Man's Curve, it was proclaimed the end of Dead Man's Curve. It was a straightaway there now, it was four lanes. And uh, just about a month later, an accident was there immediately in which five people were killed in two cars. And since the night of that accident, there's been a new ploy or a new, I don't know what you would call, a new figure has uh, shown up on the scene something known as the faceless hitchhiker. Right now I am at the intersection of State Route 222 and 125. This is only the second time that I have filmed from here because there's so many bad memories here. This is regarded as the most haunted site in the state of Ohio by many people. The very first time we filmed from here, it's actually on the film right above us in the sky was a a group of buzzards, about 10 of them, circling right here at this intersection. And that was done in broad daylight. But this place, it gives me the creeps of more than any other place I've ever visited in this county. It just, I, I don't know how to describe it other than if you come through here at night, if you just come down State Route 125 between Amelia and Bethel, this intersection is pitch black. It's extremely dark, like any other, like no other place you'll run into. You have straightaways on both ends, four lanes. How can you possibly have an accident here? And within a month after the ribbon cutting, there was a car accident here in which five people were killed. Very difficult accident to explain. Since that night, there have been more than 70 people killed here in automobile accidents. But what has been seen here many times, and I've actually seen this myself a half a dozen times, is a person always between 1.20 and 1.40 in the morning. There has been a being of some sort that looks like it's about six foot tall, weighs about 200 pounds. You can see a head, arms, legs, the shoulders, but I've been as close over on that corner over there, I was as close as six feet from it one night and still did not see a face. There have been people here who have hit it, thinking they've run over it, and then the thing gets up and chases their car. Over on this hillside, it has been seen in a silhouette at night and throwing boulders and rocks at cars. There have been cars here that were involved in some of the accidents where people died parked on the side of the road. Many, many horrible things have gone on up here. There's a book that came out last year called Weird Ohio that has a whole page and a painting of this being or whatever you want to call it. And it has been seen here by many people, but always from 120 to 140 in the morning. We had a, a, a law enforcement automobile up here one night pulled somebody off and there was somebody and there was a car pulled over. Lights on in the inside and the headlights. Nobody here. Last time I gave a tour up here close to that time of night, everybody wanted to see it at that time of night. I refused to do it. But this road was straightened out because of the accidents. The old 125 came up the hillside and curved up this way and had a horrible drop off on it, which could explain a lot of the accidents. My basic experience here at 222 and 125 is of uh, a scary nature. I've had a couple different experiences that kind of point out exactly what happens here to so many different people, many people we've talked to. 
My first experience was several years ago with Faceless Hitchhiker. Coming from the west towards the east here at 125 at about 1.30 in the morning, um, somebody on the side of the road walking away from us. And as I slowed down, this area is a friendly area, pretty much. Uh, the, the neighborhoods, everybody knows everybody. So I slowed down to see if it's somebody I knew. Maybe they needed a ride, maybe they broke down. But as we went past and slowed down and actually started to pull over, uh, when I looked back, this person had no face. Very strange. Um, complete, complete body, complete person there. Somebody, would, anybody would say, was a regular person walking down the side of the road. But when we looked back, there was no face. We started to pull away again, and as I looked back in my rearview mirror, mirror again, there was nobody there. So that was one of my experiences. Uh, the first time I saw it was uh, about Christmas time, 1969. Uh, I was with a group of friends, and something came running out of the woods. A, a friend of mine uh, had to make a sudden emergency stop out there in the woods, and came running out claiming there was a bear chasing him. And we started laughing and said, there's no bear in Claremont County. And he said, well, there's something on two feet. And uh, we all turned around and looked, and here was something coming. We could see it under the street lights there. And it got to within, uh, I don't know, 20 feet of us or so, and we never did ever see a face on the thing. I had a friend of mine, uh, oh, I guess it was maybe uh, 10, 15 years ago. She was a nurse at uh, Children's Hospital downtown. She never wanted to go through that intersection at that time of night. And uh, she, because it was Christmas Eve, or New Year's Eve night, she decided that she would stay. They were shorthanded. She comes home and there was a detour on uh, one of the roads she normally would take. And uh, she went up to the accidents, or up to the intersection in a station wagon. She was going through a divorce at the time and uh, she had borrowed her parents' car. And something stepped out, or this faceless hitchhiker stepped out on the road in front of her. Uh, she uh, was scared to death. She had gotten up to the stoplight and she decided to gun it and hopefully this thing would jump out of the way. She ends up hitting the thing and goes over it with the front and back set of tires. And as she made the turn onto 222, she was horrified realizing she might have killed someone herself. So she decided she was going to check and see. And as she's putting uh, her uh, backup lights on, she's approaching uh, this, where she had hit this thing, this figure, this being, and it had gotten up already and was um, just within a few feet of her car. It's putting its leg up as if it was gonna put its foot up on the back of the bumper and reaching up to the luggage rack to pull itself up on the car. I've, I've known some, uh, it seems, there have been guys involved, but it seems like there's ladies involved a lot. There was girls one night that talked about playing with a, a car there that uh, they had thought someone had set there just to try to scare them, and they uh, beat on the car uh, roof and uh, hit the windows and sat in the car and blew the horn. And uh, they had actually shot a couple, couple Polaroid pictures of this car sitting there. And uh, I had seen the uh, pictures of the uh, car and, uh, uh, and the, uh, the license plate. And uh, it was the same license plate of, of, of one of the cars that had been up there in a, in a previous accident. Uh, I had some friends, Shawnee Indians, who uh, went up there with me in 1991. I was telling them about the intersection. And uh, some of them went up there and said it was a very eerie place and they sensed there was someone there who had uh, been killed suddenly and did not realize they were dead. They figured that may be who it is. But they did say that intersection covers a Shawnee Cemetery. It's violating a historic site. Now, perhaps they, that may have something to do explaining what it is going on up there. I have no idea. But we also hired a clairvoyant back in 1971 when I was in college. She was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She went up there and talked about the place and thought it was the most evil, sinister place she had ever seen. And she said there was someone up there that wasn't happy with the situation, that, that this person had passed away and was not aware he was dead. Or at least that's what she said. So, uh, there's, But like I said, I, uh, there's many, many things that's gone on up there. And I have not been up there by, uh, voluntarily since uh, August of, or September of 1995 at that time of night. I'll go through there in the dark, I'll go through there in the daytime, but not that time of night. Too many things that happen to too many people.